The SPF Income Report, a unique look behind the scenes of a best-selling indie author's advertising spend and revenue. Revealing the figures, your host, Mark Dawson. Hi there, it's Mark Dawson here and welcome to the Income Report for September. So it is, just checking the date, the 3rd of October as I am recording this right now. And following the uh, great response I had to the income report for August, um, as I promised, I'm going to continue it continue onwards uh, through September and October, and we'll see how we go from there. But if this is the first time that you've heard one of the income reports, then the bottom line is that what I'm going to try and do is give you an indication of exactly what I've done with regards to advertising for the previous month. So I'll tell you how much I've spent, I'll tell you how much I've made, and I'll try and give you a few hints and tips along the way that will give you some ideas perhaps so that you can improve your own advertising too. So without any further ado, um, let's jump straight in. What I'm going to do is break down the... uh, ads and the uh, the expenditure and the income into three distinct categories just like I did last month and those categories are going to be AMS they're going to be Facebook and they're going to be bookbub and the uh, the latter of those the bookbub CPM ads or cost per thousand ads those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on most of all today because I think there is uh, quite a lot of interesting stuff going on with bookbub CPM ads and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you right now But first of all, let's jump straight into Amazon ads. Okay, so in uh, the month of September, um, I spent a grand total of £448 on my AMS ads. Now that's um, that's not too bad. I'd like to spend a bit more than that, and the reason will be obvious when I tell you how much I've made. So in uh, the month of September, I made uh, one thousand and sixty-five. That is only could only have been made from those Amazon ads. So I've taken that from the Amazon dashboard, and what I do every day is I cut, slice, and dice that so that I can see um, day on day how those ads have performed, which ones have got the best click-through rate, um, which ones are the cheapest per click, and of course, most importantly, which ones have produced the best return. Now, I haven't adjusted those figures at all. The spend is accurate. I can tell that from the money that's come out from my bank account. But uh, relying on the Amazon dashboard is a little bit unreliable when it comes to the actual amount that has been made from the ads. The reason for that, um, I've mentioned this before, is because, for example, uh, it doesn't always include um, all of the things that have been bought by people who have clicked on the ad. Um, And also, and this isn't really Amazon's fault, it doesn't include read-through. So I know, um, I've mentioned this before, and we'll get into a bit more um, on uh, read-through when we get to Facebook ads. Ads, and also when we do um, a slightly longer version of the podcast where James and I will discuss this in much more detail. Read-through is something that I know happens, um, people buying one book and then going on to read other books in this series, or indeed other books in some of my other series. And that inflates the value that um, I get from the sale of one book. But we're not taking that into account with Amazon ads. It's a bit more difficult to work that out, given that the information that Amazon prevents presents to us in the dashboard is, let's say, not perhaps the best presented in the world, not not as good as it could be. But the return on investment for those ads um, in September was 138%. So just to reiterate that, um, I spent 448 and made 1065 So that's more than doubling my ad spend there. So I am very happy with that. And I'll continue to push that. And um, a bit of a uh, spoiler alert for this month, the first few days of October have been really strong as well. So I'll come back to you um, later this month or early next month and I'll tell you exactly how those ads have performed. Okay, moving on now to Facebook ads. Of course, that's what I'm best known for. Um, and we spent a bit more time in last month's income report just diving down into exactly how those ads were performing. You will probably recall that Um, I was running a big campaign. Um, I'd set the first book in the Milton series to 99 pence or 99 cents. And I was was sending a lot of ad traffic to um, the the UK side of the um, Amazon.co.uk. And that had performed pretty well. And I was seeing very, very clear signs of read through. So 
I'm sending traffic to the first book in the series and I'm seeing uh, subsequent sales from the second, third, fourth and fifth and then on into uh, the other what, 11 books in the Milton series. So one of the things I did last month was switch all of those campaigns off. So I wasn't um, spending any money at all sending traffic to the UK or not that much. It was still a little bit of money, but nothing like as much as I was previously. And the reason for that, the fact there are two reasons, I wanted to get a look at how that read through behaved and whether um, it was something that I could see was happening, even though I wasn't spending any money to send people to the first book. So of course you'd expect them to read the first book if they like the first book then to move on through the series. And I wanted that to be as hermetically sealed as possible so that I could I could see whether or not that was happening as I thought it was. The other reason um, I wanted to switch those ads off was because um, I was, uh, I've been working with Amazon on a new ad product that, in fact, I was the first indie, certainly in the UK, possibly in the world, to, uh, to test this out. And I didn't want to skew the data by um, sending Facebook traffic across to uh, these uh, particular product pages when I was, al I was already working with Amazon to send traffic through this, this new campaign. So with that all being said, I did I did still spend £671 on Facebook ads uh, last month. Um, I'm not going to go into how much that's made. I'd rather focus for now on how um, the read-through manifested from the previous month's spending. So I looked at all of this um, information. I, I did my kind of monthly reconciliation and I compared how the books in the Milton series, the first five books in the series, had behaved with reference to previous months. Um, and it's really clear that a read through is happening. I could see it from the uh, KDB dashboard and I would have um, sent you some, I would have, certainly would have mentioned those uh, graphs in last month's report, but I can now see it coming through and manifesting in my bottom line. So um, over all of the books in the Milton series, so that's from the cleaner all the way to the Alamo, the 11th book in the series in the UK, um, and there's no other reason why this would have happened. The uh, the series sold $4,000 more in um, September than it did in August. And as I say, there's nothing else that would explain why that's taken place. It, it's fairly obvious to me that uh, that's read-through. And if you think about how um, the read-through is manifesting, as you'd expect, if um, we, we start with the clean, let's say up at 100 copies, Saint Death, the second one will be down lower at 70, 60, and then that uh, will then drop down 40, 30, 20, 10. Um, and if I look at it next month, if I was doing no other advertising onto the first book in the series, I would start to expect to see the second and third books perhaps doing, sorry, the third and fourth books perhaps doing better than the second book as uh, that read-through effect gradually percolated down through the series. I will keep an eye on that um, and I'll report anything that I see. But um, for the sake of uh, this month's advertising, I'm going to be doing lots of different stuff um, to try and generate interest in the first book in the series. So it's not going to be quite as, um, as sealed an experiment as it has been last month. But generally speaking, I'm really, really happy with how this has behaved and I will be doing much more of this um, going forwards. And in fact, uh, on the 1st of October, so two days ago, I started to do a similar campaign that I've run to the .co.uk side of the Amazon jungle, and I'm sending all of that traffic to .com, to the first book in the series on .com. So we'll see how that performs and whether that behavior is replicated. Um, I'd be very surprised if it's not replicated, but if it is, or if it isn't, I will tell you um, when we get back to look at this either next month or the month after that. Okay, so the final um, part of my advertising troika or triumvirate for um, last month as I shuffle my papers is just looking at the BookBub ads. How did BookBub perform in um, September? So this is something that I'm really interested in. I had a conversation um, in July with Adam Croft, who is a friend of SPF, um, took the course, the ads course, possibly the, I think the second time we, we offered it, so a couple of years ago. Um, and Adam did really, really well with Facebook ads. He's also pretty savvy when it comes to ads and marketing generally. And 
he looked at these BookBub CPM ads um, and in more detail than I have, I've tested them before. They're very good when it comes to uh, new releases because you can send um, ads to uh, people who follow you on BookBub. So you'd want to um, target people who you know like you and your books because that's another way you can tell them that you've got something new coming out. But I've never had any success with, say, targeting bigger authors on Amazon.com or the other Amazons or anywhere, really. And Adam came to me and said that he was having success. So I thought that sounds very interesting. I will start to look into that myself. And with Adam's help, um, I started to run some campaigns that um, were trying to sell either the first. In fact, it was only, I think, the first John Milton box set. And what we were doing, rather than targeting uh, the bigger authors on the biggest retailer, so Amazon.com and the other Amazons too, especially um, Dakota UK, we were targeting smaller um, keywords or smaller authors, so either bigger indies who'd had BookBub ads or smaller mid-list authors from traditional publishing. And we were also advertising to those uh, readers on different platforms. So um, Kobo especially has been good, Barnes & Noble, um, iTunes, and Google, surprisingly, has also worked a little bit. Also sending traffic to to the Amazons, um, to .com, .co.uk, and the other geographical variations, but I'll typically be switching those .com ones off. The reason for that is because that everyone advertises to Amazon.com, which means that there's more competition, which means that the, the uh, impressions are more expensive. So you might want to be thinking about uh, looking to target the smaller stores and authors with less of a footprint because people won't be targeting their readers quite so much. So um, I spent in the month of September the grand total of $1,054 on BookBub and I made 1,488. So that's a profit of $434 or a return on investment of 43%. So that's that's pretty good. So breaking that down, that means I've spent uh, $34 a day and I've made $48 that I know, I'm reasonably confident that can be attributed to the ads. And the reason I say I'm reasonably confident, um, I am working off benchmarks for analyzing the effective effectiveness of these ads. Normally I'd use affiliate tracking so I can be very precise, um, but because number one, I've been very busy, and number two, I'm a bit lazy, um, and number three, I, I didn't wanna use uh, affiliate tracking for different reasons last month. Um, I've taken benchmarks, so I've seen what I've um, done over the last six months, and then I've looked at what I did last month, and any difference, um, assuming uh, that nothing else, once I'd eliminated the possibility of anything else influencing those numbers, the difference can reasonably be attributed to the ads. So I was making uh, $14 a day profit, to get that 43% return. And it it has been good. So the, the, the main takeaway from this is that it's really increased my sales on Kobo, especially Kobo has been really great. Um, and I'll keep an eye on this and I'll report as the money comes into me when, when Kobo pays. But I've seen a big, a big increase um, in the daily rate of sale on Kobo from targeting Kobo readers who like those um, not quite so big authors. It's also been good on iBooks. Um, it's worked to increase my uh, sales on iBooks. Um, and interestingly enough, um, it's worked, well, before I get on to, to Google, um, it's worked on amazon.co.au. Um, that's worked quite well. And I've also seen flickers um, on .com and .co.uk, but as I said, I'm not focusing on those quite so much. Um, but yeah, it's also worked on Google. So I've gone from selling uh, four books in um, September, four uh, editions of this box set to 12. So certainly not enough money to be uh, thinking about uh, retiring to um, expensive Caribbean islands. But um, it is demonstrating that you can get some movement on, on a difficult platform like, like Google. But Kobo and iTunes, um, much, much more um, volume going through there and uh, uh, results that I'm very, very pleased with. So uh, as we go into this month, I'm going to be increasing the amount of campaigns I run this month to try and increase um, more traffic, get more traffic sent to the uh, relevant page and hopefully to generate more sales. And I'm also going to be testing some ad variations, looking at different graphics, see how those um, perform. And uh, of course, I will report back on that. So just uh, to, to finish on these um, BookBub CPM ads, as far as I know from BookBub, this is still a 
reasonably big closed beta so not everyone has access to these ads yet and I'm not talking about the featured deals um, which is basically the gold standard for this kind of marketing what I'm talking about here is the um, the CPM ads that appear at the bottom of those daily emails so I would um, recommend that you check your dashboard to see if you've got them and if you're interested in running them and you don't have them just drop um, bookbub and a line and say that you'd like to be added to the beta and um, and let, let's see what happens they're usually quite fast to add people in okay so I'm going to wrap up now apologies for the uh, <laughs> there goes another one for the bings and the bongs that have been going on through um, this income report I will remember to switch those off next time I hope this was interesting and you've got some um, good takeaway particularly on bookbub um, but I'll be back um, next month I will probably be focusing a bit more on Facebook again um, but if in the meantime there's anything that you would like um, to ask me you can drop me a line at mark at selfpublishingformula.com um, and I will be happy to, to get back to you. And of course, you can also um, join us in our closed Facebook group. So if you do a, a, a search on Facebook for self-publishing formula, you should find the group. It's closed, but if you um, apply to join, we will uh, very happily add you in. But for now, I will wrap it up. Um, happy advertising for October. I'll be back at the end of the month as we get ready for the uh, the the second launch this year of ads for authors really looking forward to um, getting that rolling again in the meantime i've got lots and lots of new stuff to record i'm going to be re-recording all of the facebook stuff after mr zuckerberg very helpfully changed the interface um, just a month after just a month before we, we launch but that's what we do um, we're going to make sure that everything is accurate and up to date so that students get the best uh, experience possible but uh, in the meantime happy advertising happy writing and i'll be back again next month bye bye the SPF Income Report, part of the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for all our podcasts, show notes, links, and a free step by step course on how to use Facebook ads to build your own revenue earning mailing list. There's never been a better time to be a writer.